Hello, buddy, Sanyur, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I wanna make a video on why CRISPR matters, right? Why companies in the CRISPR landscape matter? Why the genomic space as a whole matters, right? I wanna talk about all of that in this video using, using Elon Musk's latest interview with the All In podcast with Chamad, Jason Calacanis, and the other boys. Uh, basically talking about the recession, right? We are currently in a recession, in a market crash, in my opinion. I know it's technically, you can only say we're in a recession when you have like two negative, uh, two consecutive negative GDP declines, right? So if your GDP declines two consecutive quarters, quarters, right? So Q1, Q2, negative GDP decline, that basically means you're in a recession, I actually think we are in a recession. This started a while ago, and the stock markets obviously reflect that through the market crash we've had, right? We have a couple of companies down 60, 70, 80%, even 90% in some rare cases, but 80%, I've seen this even in the genomics world. For example, BNGO, uh, Teladoc, uh, you have DNA, you have all these companies, even Caribou, you know, CRISPR Therapeutics, all these companies that are down like 70%, right? In my opinion, and in the opinion, I think, of others as well, especially some of you watching, we have been in a market crash for a while, right? So Elon actually goes over this interview in this segment. I want to play it, and I want to give my thoughts here. Let's play it. Let's give it a play. Uh, it's about a little less than a minute, so hopefully you guys... Uh, can uh, learn a little bit here and uh, let's play it. So, uh, I, you know, now the thing is that recessions are not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, they, they, you know, um, what, what, it, I've now been through a few of them and what, what tends to happen is if you, if you have um, uh, a boom for, that goes on for too long, you get misallocation of capital. Uh, it starts raining money on fools, basically. It's like any, any dumb thing gets money and I'm sure you've seen a few of those. Um, so, at, 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 at some point, it gets just out of control, and you just have a misallocation of, of human capital, uh, where, where people are doing things that are silly and, and not useful to their fellow human beings. Um, and, and, and then those companies, there needs to be sort of an economic anima, if you will, um, uh, to, to have everyone sort of chipped uncomfortably in their seats. Um, so, <laughs> but, but the yeah, so basically, Elon talks about why a recession is important here, because you sort of take away the notion of putting money into you know into weird companies into weird sectors that's what we call dumb money right you have vcs you have investors with a lot of money in the bank a lot of money in the balance sheet big institutions with a lot of money and they're going to put in money into some companies that they haven't even had a second meet up with some in some cases at the all in uh, podcast episodes, previous episode, they actually talk about it, uh, considering they're all VCs, right? Uh, in some cases, you have some VCs putting big money into companies they haven't even met, right? Think about this. It's, it's worse than buying a house that you haven't even visited because a house in a grand scheme of things, assuming it's a good location, you have chances of either be breaking even at worst, right? You could maybe decline a few percentage there in a market crash, but for a company, this can literally go to zero, right? The company can literally go bankrupt, right? This is bunch of humans or in our organization making decisions for the organizations to move forward, right? This is not dependent on your location. It is not dependent on an asset. There is no value generating assets automatically. There is no proven history behind these companies, especially most of these companies. So what Elon is talking about here is that the recession is so important that it weeds out these weird companies, these weird sectors. And I actually agree with this statement because I think in 2017, start I would say starting end of 2017, Maybe, maybe 2016 in some cases, uh, we started seeing a lot of these companies emerge, right? I'm not talking about the IPOing, even before IPOing, you know, you had all these companies sort of getting a bunch of funding from a bunch of investors. Uh, I mean, you had DoorDash that was worth like $100 billion at some point. You had Snapchat worth $120 billion market cap. You had, 
I mean, there's so many companies like I, I, I just can't believe it. I mean, there's it. There are some exceptions that even if they're highly valued, I can see a path to that because of the branding, because of how I see the stickiness of right of those products. Right, Netflix. Obviously, now it's easier to say they're not worth you know 250 to 300 billion dollars market cap like they were a couple of months ago. Uh, but you could sort of justify that at the time through their brand, through their stickiness of the product, through the fact that most households in North America have some sort of Netflix account, a package or affiliation. It's a huge, huge house talk. Um, there's other companies too, right? You could talk about PayPal, you could talk about Lock, you could talk about Teladoc, right? You could talk about Teladoc, right? Um, but unfortunately, you had these weird companies like Zoom, right, that was worth billion and billion dollars that you had literally a straight up competitor that in my opinion did a lot more than what Zoom would offer. Uh, you had Peloton, right, that basically in my opinion was perhaps the worst company that was ever, ever, ever given that market cap valuation at like over $15 billion market cap. Uh, you had so many companies in the space, but, 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 and that's what I want to boil this video down to. CRISPR companies, have been here and they are here to stay, right? This is not dumb money. CRISPR companies are literally solving a problem that all these companies I just mentioned do not even tackle. Cancers, disease, human longevity. You're talking about human health. You're talking about lifestyle. You're talking about changing the trajectory of how we perceive health, how we combat cancers, how we deal with diseases in our families, in our communities, and ultimately in our society, right? This is what changes. This is the game changer, right? This is what I want to get across to you guys. When Elon talks about dumb money, he is definitely not talking about CRISPR companies, and I would argue he is most likely not talking about most genomics companies. And I, again, I know a lot of you guys won't agree with me, but Teladoc is definitely not dumb money. They have been hit hard. I'm not going to lie. I've talked about it. I know why it's been hit hard. Um, and it's been hit hard for a reason, but not for the reason of being a dumb money. I mean, you have companies like G DNA, you have, uh, of course, Ginkgo Bioworks. You have companies like BNGO, Pacific Biosciences. You have all these CRISPR companies, CRISPR Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, Antelia, Cabu, Editas even. You know, Editas is the only company that I could see why it's been hit so hard. But every other company except Graphic Bio for obvious reasons, I mean, there is a path for them to have that valuation, right? They're working in a novel disease, a novel, novel cause, right? They're working on something that is so noble that is so useful, that is so needed in society, that I bet you any of these billionaires, any of these millionaires would die for, right? They would die to have genome editing therapy to solve their disease, to solve type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes for one of their family members, for one of their community members. Even if it costs right now 2 million for sickle cell disease, I bet you they would die for it. But a key goal here is to reduce cost, reduce cost, reduce delays for approval, Still don't have any FDA approval for CRISPR therapy. We know CRISPR therapeutics with uh, Vertex are working on one for CTX001 by the end of 2022, hopefully this year, uh, at latest early part of 2023. That will be the first FDA potentially approved for CRISPR therapeutics and CRISPR as a whole, right? So that's going to be amazing. But people are waiting for that. We need that approval to go forward. But we don't have to wait for that, right? There's Health Canada in Canada. There's EMA in Europe. There's other organization regulatory bodies that can sort of approve it for their society, for their regions, for their community members. And I think this is the way out, right? I think this is the way out. Um, just wanted to make this video, like I said, the beautiful city is still in Porto. It's a little bit light, late night here. As you get this video, you guys will get it around 7 p.m. here on a Thursday, but I'm going to publish this at almost midnight here so i'm making this video in porto like i said i've been here for a few days in portugal amazing time um, i'm gonna end this video like this thank you so much for watching guys do like this video do smash the like button subscribe if you're not and i'll see you guys in the next video hope you guys are having a beautiful week thank you